eggs are now two weeks old. You can see they are <laughs> taking advantage of their rapidly growing feathers and starting to escape the little chick brooder I built a couple weeks ago uh, when they got here. So, the, um, when they came, the, um, the nights were super cold, it was really windy, and I really wasn't comfortable putting them in the larger brooder that I built last year in the barn. At this point, now that they have um, some more serious feathers going on, and um, the nights aren't quite as cold, the barn is pretty well protected, especially from strong drafts. Um, I'm going to put together the larger chicken brewery I built last year and move them out of my office and out there. So um, here goes. It's really sturdy. It's eight feet by four feet by 20 inches deep. Um, not only will it hopefully last me for many seasons to come, but during the season, it actually gives me a lot of opportunity to keep the chicks in one place and grow them throughout their um, different stages of development to get to the point where they're considered pullets. Pullets are basically um, a young laying hen, um, where they're not quite at the age where they would be producing eggs, but they are not chicks. So um, this gives me uh, a wide range of frankly, opportunity to organize. We just kind of keep the project in one place, keep them safe, keep them warm, keep them happy. So, something I was reminded of last year while raising those chickens was that unintentionally they make an absolute disastrous mess at times. Um, it can be cute, it can be funny, it can also be really wasteful. When you put the small grain feeder directly in the bedding that's meant to absorb their mess and keep them warm, they, they end up sort of tracking the mess, the, the shavings, into their feed. Um, feed's expensive. Grain's expensive. If, if you're wasting feed, you're wasting money. I don't want to waste money. Now, I don't know if this is something that everyone does. I don't know if this is the right thing to do, but I know that it's what I do and it, it, it's what works for me is I always have spare pieces of lumber left over from various projects. It's very easy to just put the lumber on top of the shavings, put the feeder on top of the lumber. When they jump up onto the lumber, a lot of the shavings, the bedding, will fall off their feet so that eventually they will climb up on their feeder because they're little animals, they're, they're livestock. Um, less of the shavings will be on their feet if they've already shed some of it on your, on your lumber. So that in the long run, you are not having your little feeder look like that. That is from the brooder in the house where um, they're so small when you get them, they have to actually be able to reach in to, to eat the grain. But I will toss this out in the field for the wild birds because there is, you can hear, there is still grain in there. So this works for me for both uh, feed and water. Um, they track mess into the water, which means you are wasting water, you're refilling the water frequently, which is also a waste of time, and anything throughout the process that you can do to save time, save energy, save money are all things that I am very open to trying. But, um, I'm going to fill up the grain, get their water in, turn on the heat lamps to establish some warmth within the bedding for them when I move them out, and um, we're good to go. this old towel that I just had warming in the dryer into a large bushel basket because frankly it's somewhat large and definitely tall enough so they won't bounce out on the way to the barn. Okay, so here we go.
so you can see the chicks behind me settling in. I have three heat lamps in the brooder to keep them warm. They have their water, they have their grain. As I'm going to consider today a success and hope that you've enjoyed this.